Yo, Dmitry. What's up? Oh, I'm really sorry about the update. Update? What update? Ah, the Windows update. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so I feel like we've all been there, deferring Windows updates because of many reasons. Uh, but the latest Fall Creators Update build 1803 supposedly has fixed a lot of issues surrounding HDR. So let's revisit the topic. Make sure to check out our original video on HDR here. But uh, yeah, let's revisit the topic, talk about the desktop environment and the gaming environment with HDR with the latest Windows update to see if it is satisfactory right after this. Are you ready? Um, okay. Watch this. So that is what the components must feel like inside the H500P Mesh by Cooler Master. Check it out in the description below. Whoa. So my HDR experience originally began with the LG 27 UK 850. It's an awesome display, uh, supports HDR 10 spec, and it's supposed to deliver a brighter and a more vibrant picture. But my experience with this whole HDR thing was not satisfactory for many reasons, not because of the display, but because of Windows, potentially driver updates and game updates too. So I experienced the common pink issue where the screen would be covered in this pink overlay as soon as the HDR would be turned on. That was a Windows issue, so that's been solved. The desktop would also be way too dim for regular operation outside of like consuming HDR content originally. So now that's also been solved. And for games, I had strange artifacts with colors. HDR would simply not engage and exiting a non HDR game would sometimes turn HDR HDR on my desktop. All of those issues have now been fixed with this build 1803. And to expand my sample size for HDR panels, we have the 38WK95C from LG. It's also an HDR10 panel, and I've tested both uh, Intel and Ryzen systems along with Nvidia and AMD graphics cards to see if HDR plays better on one or the other. And so with the latest 1803 build, enabling HDR on the desktop gives us proper bright image, and now we have brightness slider for SDR content, we didn't have this before. This means you can adjust the brightness of your desktop, or if you're watching something on YouTube that's not HDR, you'll still get that proper brightness levels on those videos. The hiccup, however, is Chrome for some reason, and how the browser is basically gray instead of white, and that reflects also on SDR videos, but it still weirdly supports HDR playback and display that super bright and vibrant image through Chrome. One of those HDR examples would be Austin's iPhone 10 review, which is absolutely stunning. Well done. And so this Chrome hiccup is kind of annoying because if you want to have HDR enabled on the desktop by default all the time, you will need to use Firefox that displays all the content properly without uh, having it too dim. Netflix and HDR is fantastic, which is one of the reasons why you potentially want to keep HDR on the desktop on all the time. So you don't have to go back and forth of enabling it and disabling it because you cannot assign HDR turning on by app just yet, I'm sure that will come soon, but uh, HDR on Netflix is absolutely incredible. And there's so many good HDR shows that I would say deliver a superior image in HDR versus SDR, and one of the reasons why you want to consider an HDR monitor. And so HDR10 displays have their space in the market to push HDR content, but uh, to really fully utilize the potential, you definitely have to go with Dolby Vision and OLED displays uh, because that is the future of HDR. Now the gaming experience visually is basically the same, but now without all the bugs, which is awesome. Now I've been kind of hesitant to recommend HDR panels for gamers because the list of HDR supported titles is pretty short, but the AAA titles now, pretty much all of them will support HDR. So, you know, Far Cry 5, BF1, Shadow of War, Destiny 2, and the color experience through all of these titles is basically identical. But I wanna clear out this misconception or the faulty assumption that you'll get deeper blacks, color accurate image, and uh, what is higher contrast with HDR because that has been not the case for me. Actually, it's been exactly the opposite in my experience. Now, sure, the picture is more vibrant and brighter as that's boosted to 100% by default in HDR, but you don't get more dynamic range from the game. You just kind of see more shadow area because they are lifted like in this BF1 scene, but mainly it's all about that color pop 
that could make the experience better. So Far Cry 5 for me is too bright and I like the less punchy colors of SDR, but Destiny 2 and HDR looks fantastic with appropriate color boost and extra detail in this whole like cartoony environment. And the same with Assassin's Creed Origins, that game in HDR is colorful and just absolutely awesome. But I would advise from playing during the darker conditions too close to the display because it is just way too bright and I'm just worried about like my eyes hurting after a while. Now some games allow luminance adjustment like in BF1 and ACO, but for color changes you can cycle between picture profiles from the monitor itself. Uh, also some games allow you to turn HDR on in the settings, even choose uh, between HDR10 or Dolby Vision depending on the game, and some enabled it by default based on the desktop color space. And I'm happy to report I've had zero bugs with HDR and gaming, so jumping back into BF1 it remembers my HDR settings, but exiting back into Windows that is not HDR disables HDR and there is no that color cycling between back and forth, so that's awesome. It seems like both Nvidia and AMD have been on top of their driver support. Also, Windows Update solved uh, for majority of those things too. So if you are considering an HDR display now, potentially now is the time. Now, in case you're wondering, performance difference between HDR and SDR is not significant, only a few frames lower on average with HDR turned on. And for me personally, once I tried out HDR with certain games like Destiny 2 is fantastic, Assassin's Creed Origins, uh, I cannot go back to SDR, just looks too flat and not saturated enough or vibrant enough uh, for me to experience the same gameplay. And so really this whole update with the build 1803 definitely is a huge point for HDR to drive that whole acceptance forward because many people in our original video were saying that it could be potentially because my Ryzen system, maybe the monitor was faulty, maybe my graphics cards were, something was happening with them, but in fact, it was just all Windows based issues that have now been resolved and the HDR experience as a whole is a lot more complete than before. Now, what excites me the most when it comes to gaming with this whole high dynamic range stuff is G-Sync HDR because their panels are going to be reaching that 1000 nits brightness for a spec, which is still way too bright. You're gonna have to tone it down in order to not burn your retinas, but they're approaching it from like um, true blacks or like deep blacks, uh, quantum dot panels. So that is where things are going to get really exciting for you know delivering a beautiful, deep, contrast the image that's still vibrant, it's bright, and you can see all the detail without needing to sort of lift the shadow stuff that we normally see with these panels with HDR10. So G-Sync HDR is super exciting, and uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to playing around with it myself too. But I'm curious to hear what your experience has been like with HDR. Have you played any games? Did you like the color? Did you like the contrast? Uh, and you know, once I start playing HDR on Netflix on these panels, I just cannot go back to anything else. It just looks so vibrant and rich in colors. Uh, and the whole idea is when you enable those HDR profiles, the monitor doesn't dynamically calibrate based on the areas. It's just kind of like a filter, but that filter is also uh, as a secondary layer pre-applied to the source footage the way the artist intended for you to look at HDR10 content. So it's not based on the monitor specs of like how they perceive HDR to look. It's more like taking that information and displaying how the artist wanted you to see it. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Join the wireless club with Corsair's new dark core mouse. Play the way you want with nine programmable buttons aligned in a comfortable shape, a fantastic sensor you can trust, and crazy good wireless performance, plus Qi wireless charging built in. Focus on the game, the dark core will do the rest. All right, guys, so that is it for my HDR update. It's working fine, there are no bugs, so make sure to check out this other relevant content. Subscribe to our new boot sequence channel right over here, and we'll see you in the next video.